from Goldman Sachs. So Felix is the Global Head of Digital Asset Engineering at Goldman. Okay, so firstly, thanks uh, Yifan and Tim, you know, inviting me to speak on this uh, summit. So I think try to give some perspective of Goldman on digital asset and blockchain. Of course, right, being a financial services, we focusing on more on application and launching product. I think from I think from Goldman's perspective, we actually truly believe that you know uh, digital asset, blockchain, and web feed technology largely are going to transform the whole financial market. And I think within the digital asset team in Goldman, we actually have been working on a number of you know uh, broad spectrum of. Uh, digital, ad, digital asset solution for our client across institutional, corporate, and consumer side. I think that generally when we talk about digital asset, we cover tokenized security and non-security, uh, digital currency, and cryptocurrency. Okay, so I think one of the reasons why you know, we think this is ready is you know, it's thanks for all the technologies like Yifan and Red Day and other company, right? You know, after many years of innovation, we believe, you know, blockchain technology itself, especially permission blockchain or private blockchain, mostly because of financial services, you know, we are under a lot of regulatory requirement about KYC, AML, sanction, etc. You know, with all these, uh, you know, innovation and development, we feel that blockchain technology is, is actually becoming enterprise ready to actually launch, you know, business application and financial applications. In fact, you know, you can see that actually in financial market, a number of big market operators are already embracing these technologies. Uh, you know, exchanges, clearinghouse, you know, uh, central security depository, they are already investing on using this technology. And similarly, I think a number of major banks, you know, investment bank, commercial bank, you know, including Goldman, we actually also investing on this technology to launch real application. I think compared to a few years ago, you probably see a POC, et cetera, or, or research. But nowadays, you know, you can actually see that, you know, a lot of real financial applications are being launched by these big market operator or, or leading investment bank or commercial banks. So I think from the product perspective, we are focusing on, we are focusing on use blockchain technology to digitize and tokenize and automate the whole security life cycle. So we can see that use case from issuance, underwriting, and all the way to secondary trading, custody, clearing settlement, and collateral optimization and financing. So I think, the, I think one of the reasons why we see the blockchain technology and digital asset can be a co-and-co transformer, you know, is because we see that uh, in the traditional financial market, a lot of this value chain, they're actually silo. Because, you know, they're actually developed in last 15 to 100 years. So maybe the exchange trading is very efficient, but that's probably more for equity, right? If you go into some other asset class, it's actually less efficient. If you go into some of the issuance, P issuance, it's highly, you know, paper-based or best spot, you know, using e-funds terminology, right? All point to point. People picking up phone, probably they don't use a conference call, right? Okay, so I think, you know, blockchain technology from our perspective, you know, is we try to, you know, think that the technology can address this whole value chain end to end. Okay, then maybe we think, uh, maybe zoom back to Goldman, you know, what are our focus? You know, we're focusing on three areas. I think the first area, you know, is focusing on how we can actually facilitate our client to actually launch and invest on digital solution. I think over there in this segment, we're more focusing on what we call it the digital native securities and non-security, i.e., you know, that security or non-security, like loans, they only exist in blockchain. Okay, it's a brand new security. So over there, you know, because, you know, it's, a, it's an entirely digital native security, you can probably, you know, uh, you know, reduce some of the code and code legacy, you know, incurred in a traditional security. You know, uh, you, you have less uh, boundary you need to cross, a, uh, break, that you need to break across. So I think that's where, you know, we can see, you know, a lot of, a lot of these kind of use case, you know, being launched, you know, people looking at, can I actually launch a bonds or fund or et cetera, or on blockchain or on ledger, and then support the whole end-to-end security life cycle, like I mentioned earlier. I think over there, you know, uh, the second area related to client facilitation, you know, is, uh, you know, 
if under the permissible regulatory boundary, you know, we also want to offer you know, clients exposure or investment to cryptocurrency. Of course, we know that right? different, different countries have different uh, regulatory constraints and, 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 and jurisdiction requirements. So you know, we will only support uh, under that particular market you know, if, if allowed by the regulator. So then I think going to the second area, what we more focusing on you know, is how we actually can use blockchain technology to make a existing traditional security more operate efficiently. So over there is more talking about how we create a tokenized version, smart contract based, you know, representation of an existing security. So over there we are work, looking at focusing on of, a lot is actually focusing on, uh, you know, security, right? You know, I think in US we focusing on US Treasury, Moonies, you know, i.e. That, that's more like the government bond or, or provisional bonds. I think in U, Europe we are actually focusing a lot on you know, the government bonds and corporate bonds uh, market, because, you know, we know that in those, in those uh, traditional security space, you know, they, a lot of them are actually, some of them require physical certificate. Some of them, even they are digitized, but they actually record keep in different custodian. So, you know, you can see that, you know, if you want to do a, a security characterization, a security swap, do a repo financing, it's actually still not very efficient. You know, you can very, very, very often you see that you know that the settlement, the you know the settlement could take up to T plus five. If you're talking about some of the less liquid security, like a a Nigerian bond, you know, it's actually you know you probably need more longer settlement cycle. So by creating a tokenized version of this traditional security, you can actually make the whole transaction much more efficient. Okay, whether you're talking about a delivery versus delivery, you know, you're swapping to security, or whether you are actually doing a, a, a settlement, you know, uh, delivery versus payment, you're creating a tokenized version with the support of a, of a trusted third party, you can actually make the processing much more efficient. I think one example last year, you know, on the second domain, you know, Goldman partner with another major bank, you know, we actually launched an intraday repo product. So it's actually an intraday product. We can actually do two DVP within the same day. Okay, so, so that means both the security and the cash are all tokenized and atomic swap on the ledgers. So I think that that's a, that's a second area that we think that, you know, you know, we don't need to create brand new digital native security, but even for using the blockchain technology for existing security, you can achieve efficiency. You can improve the settlement cycle. You can reduce a lot of operational risk. I think another area in the second, second domain, you know, is uh, we really believe that you know, uh, the, you know, the blockchain technology also enabling the new digital money ecosystem. I think when we talk about digital money, right, you know, generally we have three forms. Right? It could be a central bank digital currency. It could be a stable coin, you know, like USDC that Eva mentioned about that BSN is going to support. Uh, it could be a tokenization of a commercial bank fiat currency. For example, you know, a commercial bank can offer a an ESCO account, you know, you know, and then you can create a tokenized version representing that fiat currency on the blockchain. So with these uh, three forms of, uh, uh, you know, digital currency, you know, you can really support, uh, you know, and improve a lot of the financial value chain. Okay, so I think, uh, I think actually two weeks ago, right, the, 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 the I think the executive uh, executive board director of the ECB, the European uh, Central Bank, uh, Mr. Fabio Panato, he actually mentioned that he think that a, a, a pan-European digital euro will be in use, you know, in four years' time. And I think uh, Hong Kong and China could be a leader, could be ahead of that, you know, if I, I wish, right, because I think China is leading the world in terms of retail uh, CBDC or, or, or or Yi Renminbi, and you know, I think together with the Hong Kong being the being a financial market uh, gateway to the world, you know, I believe that you know we believe that you know uh, can can be leading the world in this space. I think from Goldman's perspective, last year we also participate in a very innovative innovative project called the uh, MCBDC. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, led by Hong Kong MA with to, with the uh, another three central banks. So I think this proof that you know actually Hong Kong. And, and this part of the world can be a, 
uh, can be an innovation hub or innovation driver for you know, using blockchain technology in financial market. So I think uh, actually last year when we participated in the MCBDC project, you know, Goldman actually published a, a research paper uh, actually accepted by, by Hong Kong MA into the final list, you know, actually describe how we can use uh, you know, MCBDC and how we can use blockchain technology to support a cross-border, cross-currency security settlement using digital currency. Okay, you can, that means uh, which, you know, can actually improve, you know, Hong Kong being a financial center, being a, a, a bond issuance market, you know, being a financial hub. So I think that's the second area. And then I think the last year is more about, you know, research, you know. I think we are, you know, from a, as a financial service firm, we actually, we know that, you know, blockchain technology, especially, especially about the public chain, like if I mentioned, actually bring in a lot of new concept. There's a, it's a trustless model, there's a, you know, disintermediation, et cetera. So actually there's some new things we need to actually improve, you know. So actually, you know, we research on DID, we research on, you know, zero knowledge pool. I'm not going to give another one minute <laughs> explanation, okay? So I think that that's a few, few areas, you know, from a, as a financial service firm that we are focusing on. So maybe the, so this is, I, I just give a quick overview. So, I mean, this is a very complex diagram, but I just demonstrate that or ex try to explain that actually the real life, you know, commercial, you know, digital native security being launched in a serious, in a serious manner. So I think this is actually a diagram illustrate last year, Goldman together with two other European banks, uh, SortGen and Bank Santander, actually we launched the first uh, digital bond issuance on Ethereum public chain for European investment bank. So EIB is actually the, is actually the, the, the treasury of the EU. So it's actually one of the groundbreaking uh, issuance, multi-dealer, uh, digital native security, involving a central bank digital currency to do settlement. It's actually T plus one settlement. I think traditional bond is T plus five. So this is actually T plus one because of blockchain technology. And it's actually a public offering. So we actually offer this publicly to institutional investor to subscribe the bond. So I think in, in Asia and Hong Kong, we also noticed that, right, you know, uh, I think the, the Hong Kong MA and the other institution in, in here, right, and, and, and also Singapore and other, other big, uh, you know, uh, government initiatives, are also looking very seriously. So I think we know that, you know, green bond issuance, you know, uh, ESG security using blockchain technology is actually a big focus in this part of the world. Okay, so I mean, Goldman is actually closely working in a number of uh, direct project and consortium. So we really look forward that very soon, you know, we can actually tell about a real issuance case using blockchain technology in Hong Kong or in this part of the world. So uh, maybe lastly, I just quickly maybe mention about some of the, from uh, Goldman's perspective, what we are seeing in the evolution of blockchain. I think, uh, I, I think we call it a, <laughs> Generation four, right? I think there's a lot of new application being emerging. I think uh, uh, Ivan and earlier other speaker talk about NFT. I, I think, you know, pay to earn game is also a new, new area. So maybe if I can consider add pay to earn game into one of your use case. In fact, I'm talking with my home helper. <laughs> I think people probably know that pay to earn game is actually very big in Philippines. <laughs> I actually talked to them, talked to her that, you know, hey, do you earn more from this game than what I'm paying you? <laughs> Just a key thing. Okay, so I think this is actually, you can definitely see that there are more retail and consumer use case being emerging, not just on the institutional and enterprise side. I think another development, we can clearly see that, you know, it's actually all the, big, all the governments and central authority are focusing more and more on digital asset and crypto. I don't know whether the group actually pay attention last Friday during the G7 summit, in Germany, actually the, 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 the treasury, I mean the finance minister, and also the central banker of the G7, they all call for the financial stability board to quickly come up a global standard on how to regulate and standardize, you know, rules related to crypto asset and digital asset, which we think is actually a good, which, which we think is actually a good, good, uh, good measure or good outcome, because it's actually help promote using this new technology, using blockchain, and, and, you know, and you know, make it, making more move of a traditional financial market into this uh, new technology. I think from, the, from, the, from the, some of the statement from that 
from the G7, you know, they are asking for, uh, you know, try to make sure that the regulation, the standard for, rec for, for crypto asset and for digital asset to be the same standard as a traditional uh, financial system and traditional asset. We think this is actually a good, uh, you know, really a good, good development. Of course, it might take some years, but we really look forward to. I think the last point that from our perspective, from Goldman's perspective, you know, is uh, I think I mentioned that, right? We're focusing more on commercial applications. We're focusing on whether it's a digital native security or tokenization of the existing traditional security, security or digital currency. We're focusing on the launching the commercial application and commercial products. Of course, I think, I think from a blockchain platform perspective, you know, I think a number of speakers mentioned earlier, right? You know, interoperability is key. So I think we, fo I mean, from Goldman's perspective, we make sure that you know, we want, we, our application can support and launch and interoperate with multiple permissioned private and public chains. So I think look forward to have opportunity to actually, you know, I mean, we we are we are actually working on multiple projects that can support hyperledger, fabric, Corda, Ethereum, etc. So I think you know, look forward to see the launch of the coming uh, BSN and the Spartan. I think this is a, a quick overview of, you know, Goldman's perspective. So I think thanks, everyone.